This video explains how to assign fixed colors to categorical variables in a ggplot2 plot using the R programming language. So without much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example. And for this example, we first need to create two data frames, as you can see in lines two to eight of the code. So in lines two to four of the code, I'm creating the first data frame, data one. So after running these lines of code, a new data frame object is appearing at the top right. And if you click on this data frame object, a new window is opened, which is showing the structure of our data frame. And as you can see, our data frame contains five rows and the two columns group and count. The group column is a group indicator. And as you can see, this indicator is ranging from the characters A to E. And the count column contains the corresponding values that I will show in the ggplot2 plot. Now in the next step in lines six to eight, I'm creating the second data frame. So in this case, our data frame is called data2. And if you click on this data frame, another window is opened. As you can see, this data frame also contains five rows and a group and count column. However, the group column this time is not ranging from A to E as our first data frame, but from the groups B to F. So the group F is new and the group A is missing. Now, if you want to draw these data in a ggplot2 plot, you also need to install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines 10 and 11. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 11 of the code. And then in the next step, in lines 13 and 14 of the code, we can create our first ggplot2 plot. So after running these lines of code, a new plot object called ggp1 is appearing at the top right. And we can draw this plot to the bottom right of our studio by running line 15 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a bar plot, which is showing our five bars in different colors. And note that the first bar that corresponds to the group A is shown in red, and the second bar that corresponds to the group B is shown in green. Now, if we draw our second data frame in a similar plot, as you can see in lines 17 to 18 of the code, you can see that the plot object is appearing at the top right, which is called ggp2. And now if we draw this plot at the bottom right, you can see that the groups B to F are shown. However, you can see that the group B that was green in the first plot is now appearing in red because this is the very first element of our plot. So let's assume that we want to harmonize the categorical colors that are assigned in our ggplot2 plots. Then we have to specify the colors that we want to use. So in this case, I want to use the six colors that are shown in line 21. So in line 21 of the code, I'm creating a new vector object, which is called my colors. And then in line 22 of the code, I use the names function and the levels function to return the factor levels of our two data frame group columns and to assign these factor levels to our colors. Please note that it's important that the group columns in your data frames are already converted to the factor class. So if these group columns are numeric or characters, then you would first have to convert these group columns to the factor class. However, in this case, they are already stored as factors. So for that reason, I can apply the code that you can see in line 22. And then I'm assigning this output to the names of our colors object. So after running line 22 of the code, the colors object is updated and we can print the final colors object by running line 23. And then you can see at the bottom in our studio that we have assigned a specific color to each category in our data sets. Now in the next step, we have to use this my colors object to specify the colors in our plots. And we can do that using the scale fill manual function. And within this function, we need to specify the name of our group columns and we need to set the values argument to be equal to our my colors data object that we have created before. And then I'm storing the output of the scale fill manual function in a new data object that I call my scale. So after running line 25 of the code, this new data object is appearing at the top right. And now all we have to do is that we have to specify our data 
objects, our plot objects that we have created before. So in this case, I want to assign our new color scale to the first plot, ggp1. So after running line 27 of the code, you can see that this plot is recreated. And now remember that the first group A is appearing in red and the second group B is appearing in blue. And now if we apply the same color scale to our second plot, ggp2, by running line 29 of the code, you can see that the group B is still shown in blue. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.